Peace. Hello there, uh, Boris. How are you today, pal? What's going on? I'm well, Chris. How are you? All right, Boris. Thank you. What's on your mind now? Let me hear. Well, first, uh, first time, long time. I've been listening to you for 30 years. So it's uh, wonderful being on the phone uh, for the first time. And I, I have an older son who's in college. We go back and forth about, you know, Jordan versus LeBron, LeBron versus Jordan. And last night was typical of why I don't like LeBron James. Because he could have taken the opportunity to just sit Aaron or, or the young lady that interviewed me. You know, I, I, I heard what you told me a minute ago. It's, it's a shame, whatever, whatever. Did you see him yesterday? It's like someone from his family died. It, it basically, he was so shocked, so surprised, cursing on the air. He's just a phony, and that's why I don't like well, him. I, I will say this. I, I will say this. It did bother me that we found out later, or today I found out, that LeBron was given a heads up about two minutes prior to the question because I didn't see that. And when he answered the question, I thought it was an immediate reaction. A- right, because me, Le- my, I have my 12-year-old son on the couch. I'm like, why would she ask him that question after a game? And he, like, you caught him so off guard. I actually thought she was in the wrong. And then come, I'm listening to the radio this morning. Come to find out she told him beforehand. What was the point of his acting? What was the point of that? That's well, what I, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm going to give him the pass on it. But let me say this. LeBron does have at times a little A Rod in him. You know that? Got a little A Rod in him. Uh, which is not not the in him you want with A Rod. Let's be honest. The, that Met thing. <laughs> you know, well, I would have gone to the Mets. Uh, that bothered a lot of people. Got a little A Rod in him. But uh, I think overall, you have to give LeBron a pass here. I think his reaction is is genuine. Would have I would have would I have preferred LeBron to at least essentially indicate that he was given a heads up two minutes prior instead of this is his immediate reaction? Yes, I would have preferred that. Uh, Nick in Albany, New York, and he's aboard. He's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Nick, good afternoon. How are you today? Good dog. Thanks for taking my call. You got Nick. Thank you. What's on your mind now? Let me hear. Dog, a quick comment about Hoskins and the Phillies, and then a question about Otani. Yeah, right. um, there's a effort on the on behalf of the Phillies media, uh, the Philly media, to uh, build Hoskins into a leader. Uh, I I think he's on his way, but I think it's a little too early. He hasn't played enough to played. be the leader. I know everybody seems to say that. I've read the same thing. Uh, you know, he's he looks like he's a big time player. He's hitting three thirty. Uh, he's got, I don't know how many home runs he has, but he looks like the big time player. He's playing in the outfield or at first base. Uh, I do agree. They're trying to make him out to be basically Mike Schmidt. A little soon. Let him play a little longer. Yeah, he's 25. He hasn't played a full, a full season. Absolutely right. uh, There's some truth. I agree. Next. Go ahead. Uh, Otani, dog. Um, I know we're not there at this point. We might never be there, but if he is the number one pitcher for the Angels going down the stretch, and they are fighting for a playoff spot. Right. At what point does his value on the mound outweigh his value at the plate? Uh, he will. Uh, they will keep him happy by giving him the occasional game in a DH spot. But if they're in a pennant race and it's you know second half of the season, they will make sure that Otani is well rested for his starts, and that means not playing. They don't need his offense as much as they need him to pitch. So that's another good question. Two good ones. Very good ones there by Nick. Paul in Cocoa Beach, Florida. He's got a chance. He's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Hello there, Paul. How are you today, pal? I'm good, Chris. How are you? Fine. What's going on now? Let me hear. Hey, the NFL schedule. I mean, I know it's not week one, but week two. So they really have to put the Giants and the Cowboys on again? Yeah, it's too soon. Uh, Last year they played in week one. They did that a year, years and years and years. Uh, right. You'd like to not have to go to Dallas so soon if you're a Giant fan. I, I felt the same way. I didn't say it. You did for me. Good job on your part. I agree. Week two, Giants, Dallas. When last year we heard Howard tell us that he would have liked to have gotten the Giants away from Dallas early in the year, the following year they put him in the second week of the season. So I understand where you're exactly. coming from. Yep. Right. And then the, the first week, that uh, the Sunday night game you said was the Packers and the Bears. Yeah, it looks like it's Bears in Green Bay. In, in Green Bay. Horrible. I, mean, I mean, I understand Aaron Rodgers will carry it, but I mean, Trubisky didn't show anything last year. And as far as the Monday night game, at least the Jets, if they, you know, they're definitely going to take a quarterback. I'd be more interested in seeing who they're going to start. You know, I, that's why I, I like that as the Monday night game for the Jets. But 
that Sunday night game, Trubisky didn't show anything in the Bears. That's going to be a horrible game. Well, I, listen, they, they need to get the Bears on TV. Uh, you know, you got to play. Everybody's got to play once. Get them out of the way. It's a rivalry game. Bears, Packers, and Lambeau, that can, they can sell that. The Jets and Lions, same deal. Have to get the Jets out of the way. Now, as it turns out, they play in week three on TV. But you got to get them out of the way. Uh, you know, it's a New York market for ESPN, so they're okay with it. Detroit's a big market. They're okay with it. Uh, the Jets and the Lions is, you know, for them, not a bad game. Now, uh, you know, I, it, it's an, it's, there's really not a bad game in the first week of the season. I mean, do you ever, is there a bad NFL game first week? I mean, I, there really isn't a bad game. So if there's not a bad game, why don't you get rid of some of the appearances that some of the teams that may not be great out of the way right you know, right away? And I think that's what they decided to do with New York and with the Bears. I don't know that. that that's what I'm just thinking. Mike in California, Mad Dog Unleashed. Michael, good afternoon. Your turn. How are you? Uh, before I go into my Yankee point, uh, I wanted to kind of go on Hayden's point a little bit. You did – and the whole offseason, bashing Romo, doing this every time, even up to the Jacksonville-Buffalo game. Right. And then when you had the CBS guy on, right. you were like, I admit I made a mistake about uh, Romo. Well, I mean, I, you know, I, we had – he was going so well, Mike. That was McManus. That was the Friday before the NCAA or the Friday of, before the Final Four. He was going so well. If I have to explain the way I, I thought of that when I asked the question, he was doing such a good job for us that day. He gave us a great half hour. Masters, Tiger, everything. He was going so well that day. I almost told myself, let's throw Sean a bone because, you know, he listens a little bit. I know that. Uh, so, and I was all over the Romo thing. So let's kind of throw Sean a bone here to make him feel better. We'll get better answers out of him. That that was my philosophy there. I know your point. Uh, you know, he got all over Romo all year. And now you kissed his rear end for hiring him. That wasn't, that interview was not about Romo. It was about the two big events, Final <laughs> Four and CBS. And, and you know, I, you know, I probably have been a little harsh on Romo. I don't love him as much as everybody else does, but he's better than I think. So there you go. Okay. How's that? That's fine. All right. Uh, two, other, two Yankee points. First, uh, Tanaka had three big starts in the postseason. Not two like you mentioned yesterday. Uh, he had and, uh, one so, again. He had, he, had, he, had, well, he had two against Houston? Yes. I think it was game one and game five, if I'm not mistaken. Um, five was unbelievable. He was just, they couldn't hit him with those. Yeah, five, he was great. Astros were shot that night uh, because they had lost game four. Astros were flat as a pancake, but he was, he he threw a two-hitter. He threw a two-hitter. I understand. Go ahead. Uh, So I do think Tanaka has the upside that most number two or three starters don't. And maybe, you know, who knows, maybe he's just one of these guys who's just really good in the postseason. You know, some pitchers like, you know, have good regular seasons and do bad in the postseason. Maybe he's the opposite. But, so that's just one thing to mind. My main point is about Madison Bumgarner. I just wonder if you think if the Giants, he's a free agent at the end of the year, the Giants are, are if the Giants were out of it from the trade deadline, do no. you think they would put him on the market? No chance. No chance. You want the Yankees to get him. Not a chance. Bumgarner wants to sign with the Giants. He's a Giant for life. He was on a team that won three titles, him and Posey. Uh, no way the Giants are trading Bumgarner. Uh, here is Vinny in North Carolina, Mad Dog Unleashed. Vin, good afternoon. How are you today? I'm good, dog. How are you doing? All right, Vinny. Thank you. What's on your mind now? Let me hear. Um, well, I just want to say a uh, reference to the caller, not the last one, the one before that, about the uh, Packers, uh, why they're on Sunday night. They're on Sunday night because it's their 100-year anniversary. Oh, that's right. Of, on the of day. That, of that. It, it, you know what it is, folks? It's not the 100th anniversary of the National Football League. It's the 100th anniversary of the forming of the Green Bay Packers. Isn't that what it is? Yeah, that's that's what it is. When the Packers actually became the Acme Packers, founded by Curly Lambeau. Right, 1919. So, Remember now, the league's first year is 1920, but the fa- Packers were formed a couple of years before that, and that's right. why the Bears and Packers are playing that game. It's two original franchises. Good question. Right. Excellent. What else, Vinny? That's it. Uh, no, I mean, if you ever have a chance to go to Lambeau, it's, I, I highly recommend. I went for the first time. Uh, this past season when they actually got blown out by the Ravens. It was a horrible game, but the actual, you know, atmosphere and everything is awesome. Oh, it's bad. I've been there three times. Um, it's, 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 if, if you love NFL football, it is a bucket list item, Lambo. Not even an issue. You have to go. 
Um, now, there's about four or five facilities. Let's leave Wimbledon and, and Augusta out of it for the moment. There are about four or five, uh, you know, there's about f- more than that. There's probably about seven or eight events that you need to go see in America if you're a sports fan. A football game in Lambeau is one. A football game in Notre Dame is two. Um, you could mention a Duke, North Carolina game in college basketball, three. Probably a visit to the Rose Bowl is four. Fenway and Wrigley is a no-brainer. That's five and six. You know, I can come up with a couple of more. A hawk in Montreal, go see a Canadiens game, I would think would be a no-brainer, would be seven. Um, but I, there is, you know, in the old days, I could come up with four or five NBA, Boston Garden, Chicago Stadium, but that's kind of out now. But there's no question about it. Lambeau is a must. That's all there is to it. An absolute must. Andrew's in Ryan, New York. Mad Dog Unleashed. Andrew, good afternoon. How are you today? Hey, doggy. How you doing? Fine, Andy. Thank you. What's on your mind now? What do you have? So, um, uh, first off, let me just tell you uh, how much uh, I love the show. Um, I'm going to tell you that so you don't hang up with me uh, when I give you a crazy suggestion. Go ahead. How about how about Becky Hammond to coach the Knicks? I think she will get a job one day. Uh, I think she. I guess she didn't take the Colorado State job. Uh, I think she will coach on some level one day. I don't think the Knicks would bring her in here that first time. And speaking of the Knicks, this quote bothered me today. Larry Brooks, give him credit. He got a one-on-one with Dolan on the Rangers, and then Dolan talked to him about the Knicks. Uh, this is what uh, Dolan said about Hornacek. Steve, did you read this today? New York Post? No. Dolan. I think Hornacek had the same kind of issue that Phil did in that he did not grasp how different the players are now in the way they think and deal with management and the coaches, Dolan said. I think he was behind on that. But I think Jeff's a good coach and he'll do well when he's hired by another team. Now, let me get this straight. Did the Knicks this year lose more games than they should have, or are they about a 30-win team? They were about a 30-win team. That's the first thing. Well, as soon as Porzingis got hurt, they had basically no chance to win anymore. Bottom line is, how do you, you know, it's not like they won 15 games. They won 29, 30 games. That's the first thing. Second thing, didn't I read from Courtney Lee and Beasley and um, and Hardaway that they all thought Hornacek was, did a good job for the team this year? Second half of the year. What is, what is Dolan referring to? Yannick Noah? Who gives a crap what Noah thinks? I mean, he's a stiff at this point of his career. Who cares what he thinks? I'm supposed to worry about Noah getting into a fight with Hornacek in a practice? So that bothered me a little bit. I know I'm a Hornacek fan, but that bothered me. Yeah, you are. You are. Well, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So Mark Jackson's going to be the answer now. Let's bring Jerry Stackhouse in. Here's Kenny Smith to coach the Knicks. Kenny Smith. Oh, boy. There you go. Well, Porzingis now, there's, there's rumors that he might not even be back uh, this upcoming year. Well, the Knicks are going to take it very easy. They are, you are, you know, why play him? I mean, what's the point? Outside of boredom for Porzingis, why play him? They're going nowhere. They're going to be a 20-win team. The less wins you have, the more lottery balls you have in your, in your container. And remember, next year, the lottery changes some. Well, you know, well, not that that would hurt the Knicks because it, it, it's not a, it's it's a different waiting scenario for next year. And Dolan's got two uh, two major franchises in his building that are rebuilding right now. Right. Bad. Very bad. Right. The Rangers will be back quicker than you think. Yeah. Well, quicker than the Knicks. The Rangers have the goalie. Rangers they they put it together pretty quick. The Knicks are a mess. But mm-hmm. I don't like taking a shot at Hunasek out the door. Well, we got rid of him because he can't connect with the players. Well, where is the evidence of that? Did they did they lose? Did they players quit on them and they win ten games? They won about the game. They won about they their record was where it should have been. They were a thirty win team. That's what he won. He won thirty games. And all the quotes I read said they like Cornersack, Hardaway, uh, uh, Courtney Lee. You know what? They don't blame on him. This guy does he does a great job. They practice hard. We have a good deal. He has good game plan. Loved them. What, because Noah didn't like the fact that Hornacek played him four minutes uh, against Golden State when I guess he told him he was going to play him more that night? That's where, that's where this comes from? Noah, who's basically stealing from the Nick organization $72 million? How about him giving him the money back? That fraud. Yeah, I'm sure that'll happen. Come on, jeez, my God. I'm going to pick on Jeff Hornacek out the door. Jim Dolan now? Jim, okay, if that's Hornacek's problem that he has an issue relating to the player, what's your problem? Because since you've run the team and Chekets has been out, you've won one playoff series in 30 years. That's true. What is your problem? 
You told us what Hornacek's problem is. Now, what's yours? Let me hear. You are, Since you got rid of Checkets, who was the best executive probably in the history of the Knicks, since you got rid of, who hired Pat Riley here, by the way, since you got rid of Checkets and you've run the team, how's it going? Not particularly well. And you sent Don Chaney on the night of a ball game out with his bags on 8th Avenue to get a cab. <laughs> how's it gone for you? That was a nice gesture. Yeah. How's it gone for you? But now we're going to rip Hornacek out the door. Oh, come on. Stop, please. I can't listen to that. That's a nonsense. That boy. And I'm, I, I like Dolan. I know everybody can't stand him. I like him. But that was wrong. When, you, when you're the owner of a franchise, and since you're uh, uh, running the team, your team has made won one playoff series in literally 20 years. I can't sit there and hear you're not going to coach when you've had a million coaches. Der- oh, what was Derek Fisher's issue? What was Woodson's issue? Well, what was Cheney's issue? I, I can't. I, I can't listen to that. I think you'd agree. Uh, hard for me to disagree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, who, Columbus, Washington tonight. Who wins? I think the pattern will be broken, and Columbus will win. Oh, do you really? Yeah. I'm surprised. All right. I don't think so. Bruins, Leafs. Bruins. Oh, you do. Mm-hmm. You won. All right. Uh, Portland get back against New Orleans. I could actually see them winning a game. I know it sounds crazy. But let's just see how, you know, sometimes when these teams, it's, it's odd how they handle the success, right? They have two games on the road. That's why Danny and I were talking about betting tonight. And there was somebody on Patrick's show last night that was saying that, you know, the, the smart play sometimes is taking the teams that are trailing down two games to none in the first half because there's a little more desperation home or away. A little more desperation. I can't take these bets in the first half. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just kind of giving you an example of why I bet. You know, I, I think, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't rule out Portland tonight. I agree with you. I mean, Miami, uh, Miami Sixers. I think Miami's going to win tonight. You do? Yeah. Even with the beat. All right. Golden State beat the Spurs? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I could, I could try to say they're going to try to, you know, rally the troops, but I just. I think ultimately it just comes down to who's better and who's. And the Yankees will lose to Sanchez tonight. Get under five hundred. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Stanton. No, they, you know they shuffle the lineup around a little. Oh, bit. they Stanton batting. Was he batting tonight? Well, they're going to have Judge DD third and then Stanton fourth. All right, they're going to put it right. What were they doing? They're doing Judge two, Stanton three. So they're going to put the lefty in between, yeah. which is what I told them to do weeks ago. Yeah. Who said that? Did I say that weeks ago? You are, weeks ago. you are a shrewd individual. I said that weeks ago. Aaron Boone is Steve's buddy. Uh, he loves Aaron Boone. Oh, boy. I do? Yeah. Love him. Somehow, Girardi gets fired. I don't love him. I'm just saying, like, to kill the guy no, right no, now. Well, just, hold on uh, now. Well, why, why did Girardi get fired? He got They, they got the game seven of the ALCS. Oh, I had the Astros dead, dead the rights. Yet he gets fired because he can't relate to the players. They bring Stanton in, and they're eight and eight. And the Red Sox are gone in the division. Yeah, it's over. I think they, what's their magic number? Well, believe it right now, Steve. I know you're going to sit there and tell me you spied the Red Sox as seven games in the standings. That, 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 that's a lot of games this time of the year. It's a lot of games. Can't be made up. It's over. I didn't say it can't be, but I, you look at your history of the sport and you find me the amount of teams who have come back to win a pennant or a division down by seven or eight games at the end of April and you will add them up on one hand. One hand, huh? Correct. Mm. One hand. So you're saying there's like three or four? Not that many. You fall behind by eight, nine games in the month of April. You had chance saw you not winning the division or the pennant. And can I get a mulligan and the Oriole pick over under? Not going too well, is it? Oh, my God. Are they 5-14? and 14? Alex Cobb, can you get a couple of outs? Nice pitching they had today Jeez. in Detroit. You know, they pitched well. They haven't hit. Today they hit, and Alex Cobb li- li- lights it up. Yeah, well, the only team they beat was the Yankees. It's perfect. Three out of four. It's amazing. They have had a brutal schedule. You know who they play next? The, the Orioles, did you know who they play next? I don't. Cleveland. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and Cleveland's already there. Yeah. They got there this morning after the Puerto Rico trip. Right. I mean, the Orioles have played three in Fenway, four at Yankee Stadium, three with the Blue Jays, three in Houston, and three in Frigid Detroit, and now they get the Indians. Yeah, not great. The Blue Jays, off their start, you know who they have played outside of the Yankees? Kansas City. Yeah, they haven't played anybody. Kansas City, the White Sox, Texas, and the three games in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Now it's four in New York. So we'll see what happens. There you go. Ready to go with the Yankees sports have a tough little stretch coming up. Uh, the Yankees have the Angels in Houston, back to back, and a belly to belly. Then they come home for uh, for Boston and Cleveland. Uh, you know, and I looked at the Red Sox. That's right. I'm glad you looked. At, I'm glad you said that. 
I was looking at this today on TV. Ready? You find it. Because everybody, everybody was wondering, well, how come the Yankees had this kind of schedule? When's the Red Sox tough schedule? So let's just get this right so we know. The Yankees will play Toronto four games. Steve knows it by heart. I read it to him. They play the Toronto and Minnesota. That's just hard. Then they go to, they always beat the Twins, so forget that. They go three in Anaheim, four in Houston, three home Cleveland, three home Boston. That's hard. Very. And then now, they got the Nationals shortly thereafter. Uh, then they, for in between, they got the A's. So let's, uh, you know, let's be fair. Be in between, they have uh, uh, the A's and, they, and the Royals after that. Now, here's Boston's tough schedule. You ready, Steve? You'll mm-hmm. find this interesting. I was reading this the other day. In the month of September, the Red Sox have this stretch. You ready? Three with the Astros. Mm-hmm. Three with Toronto. Three with the Mets. Four at Yankee Stadium. Uh, three at Yankee Stadium, three in Cleveland. So they play Houston, Toronto, the Mets, Yankees, Indians in September. Yeah, that's uh, pretty different. Well, that's but, well not, thanks to this great start, they might have a big enough cushion where it won't matter. Why the Yankees in September have Baltimore, Detroit, Oakland, Seattle, Tampa, at Minnesota. Mm. So a decided advantage on paper, anyway. Yeah, you don't like the schedule game. I love to play it. All right? Well, I mean, I think that's pretty significant. But... Auto, Red Sox 14-8 today. Is that, uh, not Red Sox. Tigers, Tigers. 14-8 today. No, 13-8. 13-8. And the uh, Cubs beat the uh, eight, Cardinals? 8-5. Eight, All right. Uh, Cubs are down 8-1. The uh, Cubs are up 8-1. Houston's Cardinals up 5 nothing in the 7th at Seattle. They're going to win 3 out of 4. All right, next. After they stumbled a little bit. Yep. Uh, uh, we know the Eagles and the Falcons, the first Thursday night game. All right. Uh, John Elway, hear what he said today at a pre-draft I, press conference. I might trade out of the fifth pick. He's open to trading. Brandon Marshall cut loose by the Giants. Okay. And uh, we, we know about uh, Brian Price, who you are seem to be obsessed with, uh, the Reds manager. He's let go. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. You know, yeah. NBA and Stanley Cup playoffs. You know, you have no problem. Good for Price. Get him the hell out of there. No, that, that was your basic say that. I just don't know why we needed to spend five minutes on it. Well, he's the manager of a major league team gets fired in the middle of April. I mean, my gosh. I mean, you don't think that's a topic? It's a topic uh, for a it's little not, while. It's not the Calgary Flame upheaval with their coaching staff. It is the Cincinnati Reds, Steve. That, that's a big-time franchise. True. I haven't done much lately, but yeah, big time franchise. Big time. Everything else? Uh, how you feeling? Feel Health wise? Uh, yeah, feel feel pretty good. Everything okay at home? Everything seems uh, seems a okay. Luke okay? Luke's doing fine. Uh, Kyle's okay. As far as I know. Uh, uh, yeah. Alex has got a job at the MLB Network. Oh no, she got a job at the MLB. And, out of Indiana, and she's going to be get a, uh, commissioner's office. She's going to be Rob Manfred's right hand person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What a job by Alex! She yeah. got Courtney the hell out of there, and she's got Alex. That's in. right. That makes Alex uh, perf- that makes perfect sense. That's what Steve did. You know, Courtney gets us all the Super Bowl booths and everything, uh, the World Series booths, and does a great job for us and him. But he made sure he orchestrated that takeover. Uh, Alex in, pat out. Yeah, that, seem, that seems realistic to a person <laughs> right out of college. <laughs> Nineteen in front of the hour. Here on Mad Dog Unleashed. <laughs> 